Exodus chapter 20 tonight, we are at commandment number 9. So almost done with the Ten Commandments. uh, Commandment number 9. And verse 16 says, Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. I tell you, I've, I've been ready to preach this one for a while. You know, we've got a big... Big problem in this country with this whole thing of bearing false witness. First of all, we have the news media that's been lying to people for years. Okay, I mean, just lying, lying, lying. I mean, we are we're used to it. Okay, we see it in politics all the time. I mean, most of what's on the news is politics. It's politicians. It's these guys that get up and what do they do? They just they just lie about each other. They bear false witness. We see it over and over again. And we get so used to it, we're so desensitized to it, it doesn't even bother us anymore to just see a politician lie. And you know what? I am just horrified at Baptist churches, the way they are bringing politicians into their churches all the time and letting these people speak and you know, promote their, you know, their campaigns and things. I think that's a joke and I think it's a shame. Anything, oh, they're Republicans, you know, they're against abortion, they're, they're okay. No, they're not. These people are liars, they're scumbags, I mean, they're just full of the devil, and because they've got a R in front of their name, they will let them come and stand behind their pulpits in church, I mean, some lying scumbag, lost politician. I, I don't understand that. I mean, they'll let a known, proven liar just get up and speak in their pulpit. I, I don't get that. I don't understand that. But you know what? We're used to it. It doesn't even bother us anymore. You know, as long as they're lying about a Democrat, it's okay. That's how we feel about it. And then we have the social media world where on the social media, I mean, people lie and they lie and they lie against their neighbor, against their friends. They will, they will tell stories about people and there's no accountability. They can just put whatever they want out there and bear false witness against their neighbor, and no accountability, none whatsoever. And I'm going to tell you right now, it makes me sick. I'm a little fired up tonight, folks. I hope you don't mind this, but I don't like this bearing false witness against your neighbor. I think it's something we ought to take very serious. And you know what? We need to get woke up tonight because we're so used to this. We hear it every day on the news. You see it every day on social media. And you know what? We think nothing of just making up stories about people anymore. And not only is it all over the television, not only is it all over the internet, but you know what? It even goes on in pulpits today. It goes on in churches. And I have had the horrible misfortune of sitting in services and listening to preachers, preachers supposed to be men of God, just get up and lie through their teeth about other people. Okay. And listen, there's a difference between just lying and bearing false witness against your neighbor. If you ask most people today, you know, hey, name some of the Ten Commandments for me. One of them you'll hear is thou shalt not lie. Okay? But no, it's thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. It's always wrong to lie. Okay? But, for, but at the same time, it's worse to bear false witness. If you came up to me and you said, Brother Tommy, did you brush your teeth this morning? And I said, yes, when I didn't, I would be lying. That's a sin. But am I hurting anybody? No. But I am sinning. But if I went to you and said, you know what? Brother Lonnie didn't brush his teeth this morning. Well, now I'm bearing false witness. I'm lying against him. Now nobody's going to want to talk to him because they're going to afraid if they get too close, they're going to smell his bad breath. And so I now have caused people to think negatively about Brother Lonnie. They think he's gross. And I, and, I, and I just made it up. I lied about him. It is so much worse to bear false witness against your neighbor than to just tell a lie. And we need it. I tell you, this needs to stop. And you know what? Preachers need to start being held accountable for this. And you know what? How many of you in here saw my interview I did this week with Stephen Anderson? How many, how many else? All right, some of y'all saw that. And listen, I'm going to tell you what inspired that whole thing, and that is listening to people lie about him. I mean, I, it, just, it blows my mind the way people think, you know what, because he's a little different than your mainstream IFB, that means it's appropriate to lie about the guy. Just because the guy's exposed a few false prophets and he's made some people look like idiots that deserved it, that had it coming, they think it's okay to lie about him. And I've sat there, I've been there, and conversations are going on, and I will hear the most outrageous thing said, and, you know, and I'll, I'll stand there, and these people are just, yep, yep, that's right. And it's like, 
No, I know you're not that stupid. I know you don't believe what he just said. And you know what? I, I call it out. In multiple occasions, I have done that. I have called it out. I was like, I'm like, what are you people thinking? How is this okay to just lie? Now listen, if you just want to say, I don't like the guy, if you just want to say, you know what? I disagree with the guy. I disagree with his doctrine and want to go disprove his doctrine. That's fine. But when you start just making stuff up, when you start lying, when you start making up things about his personal life and you start stating things as fact that you even, that you have no way of knowing, I'm telling you right now, that is breaking that ninth commandment. You are bearing false witness against your neighbor. And you know what? Sadly, I, I, I need to mention this because unfortunately I did a little too good of a job playing the role of mainstream Anderson hating IFB. And a lot of people thought I was serious during that whole thing. But I'm going to tell you right now, I was loving what he was saying. I was loving the answers that he was giving. I was having a hard time not cheering him on and putting my two cents in because it was so good what he was saying and people needed to hear it. But you know what? I had, I had to play that role because you know what? These bozos that are out there lying, they haven't got the guts to just ask them. And you know what? I put it out there. I was asking for pastors to send me emails with their questions and concerns. And you know how many I got from pastors? I got zilch. I got nothing. You know why? Because these people, they know they're bearing false witness. They know they're stinking liars and they're not going to put their name on anything, but they feel completely safe, just like some little basement dwelling millennial that gets behind his keyboard and thinks he can say whatever he wants. They feel completely safe getting up behind their pulpits while they got all their yes men out there and they can just get up and they can say whatever they want and feel like they shouldn't be held accountable for it. But you know what? I say that's garbage and I'm going to call that stuff out. I'm going to point that out. You know, if you got a person that's, you know, in leadership that people are looking to that can just get up and bear false witness like that, somebody needs to call that guy out. You know, somebody needs to call out these people on social media and on, on, in the news media for the liars that they are. People need to stop watching these people in the news media. Their ratings should plummet like crazy. I'm talking about CNN and I'm talking about Fox News. People think if Fox News says that it's okay. I, I'm, I'm sick of that too. You know, and it's like it's okay if Fox News lies about a Democrat because that helps counter all the lying that CNN does against the Republicans. You know, you, you don't make things better by telling another lie. It is, it's a bunch of garbage, and I'm not going to have anything to do with it. I'm not going to have any part of it. And I'm telling you, these preachers that are out there too, that feel completely comfortable just getting up and lying about people, they ought to be shamed out of their churches. They ought to be fired. They ought to be fired. These evangelists that are going around tweeting some of the horrible things. Listen, all those questions I was asking on there, those were all things that people have said to me. Those crazy accusations I was just throwing at them with no evidence. Those are things that people have said to me. They told me, you shouldn't have anything to do with that guy. Because did you know this about him? Or did you hear that? You know, where, where's the proof of that? Oh, they heard it from another liar. They heard it from somebody else who's going to bear false witness. And it is. It's just gotten completely acceptable. And just because somebody is on another side of an issue, a guy can get up in preacher's meetings. And they can say stuff about them. And you'll hear all these preachers, Amen! That's right! You, they have no idea. When you can get up and talk about what a guy and his wife did before they got married and just throw an accusation out there, like that, and then a bunch of preachers stand around saying, Man, how do they know that? Listen, it's one thing when you're amening something that the Bible says, because we can verify that. You know, you all can look and, yep, that's what the Bible says, amen. I know that's true, amen. But he'll go and they'll just lie about something, something has no way of knowing, and everybody's amening it. You know what? Those people are a bunch of morons, and they ought to be ashamed of themselves. And listen, I'm just going to be honest. I had fun doing that interview and exposing these people and just showing how ridiculously stupid they are and how big of liars they are. Because let me tell you, and, and I did, I, I hope it shamed, I hope it shamed some people. These people ought to be ashamed of themselves. You better get your facts straight. And let me tell you something. It's not just in the news media. It's not just on social media and with preachers. You know what? People in churches are doing it too. And let me tell you, if you get caught up in that stuff, if you're getting caught up and just lying about people and gossiping about people on social media, bearing false witness against your neighbors, you better be ashamed. Listen, I'm not on Facebook, all right? 
And if you're on Facebook, that's fine. But you better hope I never get on Facebook. Because I'm going to tell you, right, one of the reasons I'm not on Facebook, I don't want to see what anybody in my church is put, saying on there. Because let me tell you something. I'm fired, I'm fired up tonight. But y'all are just lucky. I haven't seen nothing from you. Because then I, this is going to be at you. But you know, it's at, it's at other people tonight. Because that's where I'm seeing it. But I'm telling you right now, you know, I would. I'd be sniping some of you. <laughs> if I saw you out there lying, I'd say something about it. And listen, I do. I, I run with preachers aren't afraid to say stuff about it. I thank God for some of my preacher friends that are out there. I'm th- you know, Brother Manley Perry, he had to just throw a guy out of his church. And I, I did. I, I watched a video of him doing it, and I enjoyed it. I enjoy a guy that's brave enough and bold enough to get up there and call a guy who's railing on people and lying about people online and calling him a punk and throwing him out of their church. Because if you can do that, you are. You're just a punk. To just get online and just lie about somebody. And when you can't even do it to their face, you are a punk. And you know what? Thank God for those who are brave enough to say it. Because in most churches, it's going on and nothing's being said and nothing is being done. And I am, I'm, I'm thankful for that. And let me tell you something. When you, when you lie, when you say anything that's not true, it's always a sin. But when you lie against someone to cause them harm... You're violating that ninth commandment. And let's look at some things at what the Bible says about bearing false witness against your neighbor. Because it's, because when we, here's some ways we bear false witness. First, when we lie about someone who's being charged with a crime or, get them, or if we get them charged with a crime. That's bearing false witness. Okay? If somebody commits a crime and you witness it, okay, you, ought to, you ought to testify. Okay? If you witness somebody murder somebody, you ought to testify to that. You know, if there's a, when there's accidents or when bad things happen, it helps a great deal if there is a witness. It helps a lot. It can help justice be done if there was a witness. But listen, when you bear false witness against your neighbor, when you accuse them of doing something, you maybe get them under investigation when they don't deserve it. I'm telling you, that's serious stuff. And that's wicked. You know, when you make up a story about someone to discredit them and you hurt their reputation you're bearing false witness against them if you're turning people in the church against other people in the church and you are you're making stuff up and you're lying about them because you're trying to move up the ranks and popularity in the church and you start bearing false witness against your neighbor folks that is that is wicked when we purposefully mislead someone in a way that hurts someone else well, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to say anything. You know, and we've, we've figured out how to say things without saying anything, haven't we? You know, we know how to do that. We know how to tell stories without necessarily even opening our mouth. We know how to mislead. You know, and, uh, and it, it's, it's sick. And anything that you do or say, any, anything, anything that you do that causes others to think negatively about someone else, or that causes harm on someone else. That is bearing false witness against your neighbor. And that's wicked stuff. And in America today, it's completely out of control. Thanks to the news media and social media. There is, there is zero accountability. Folks, I, I, just, I cannot believe. I can't believe how preachers today can get up in pulpits and say the things they're saying. And nobody says anything. Nobody does anything. Those tweets that I was reading, I, I didn't make those tweets up. I was, I read those tweets on there that Sam Gipp it was saying about another preacher. I mean, just lies that he knew were lies. And yet other preachers are liking those on there. Retweeting those things. I mean, folks, I'm telling you right now, that's just pathetic. And I'm gonna, you know, I'm I'm gonna completely distance myself from people like that. And I'm not sh- I'm not ashamed of it one bit. I'm ashamed I'm ashamed of those people. I mean, I'm telling you, with some of the stuff that's been going on right now, I, I am embarrassed. I literally am embarrassed by some of my friends. Some of the people that I care about and I love, they have embarrassed me. Because I do. I consider these people my friends, and yet they I've I have watched them lie. Because politically, they're against somebody. And a lot of this stuff is, it's political. And they just think it's okay to lie because everybody's against that guy. And it does. It, it, it helps their popularity. They feel like this will, if I can pull him down, 
it will prop me up. And I am. I'm embarrassed by it. And I'm not afraid to tell them about it. But listen, we should be truthful in our witness no matter how alone we are and no matter how unpopular the person is being lied about. Look what it says in Exodus chapter 23. Exodus chapter 23, verse 1, it says, Thou shalt not raise a false report. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. We've all heard that verse about not following a multitude to do evil. But you all understand what the, the context of that is talking about when they're trying to take somebody down, when a false report's been raised, especially if it's a poor man, all right? You know, this guy, he's a nobody. Nobody cares about him. He's not a big deal, but yet everybody is coming out against him. I mean, there is a large effort to go against him. And then as a result of that, pressure gets put on you. Hey, join us in this. Hey, you be against this guy too, but you know the truth. And the Bible says, don't follow a multitude to do evil. Listen, it's real easy to just jump on the bandwagon when certain people are getting attacked. I've seen it politically too. Because in, in the political world, you know, people, you know, Baptists especially, Baptists feel 100% safe bashing a Democrat if it's something that Fox News has confirmed is true. But listen, yeah, Fox News represents a lot of people. In fact, you could say Fox News represents a multitude. But if that multitude's doing evil, we're not going to follow them. Oh, well, you're joining CNN? No. They're all evil. And I'm not going to join any of them. And we'll see it too. You know, even amongst preachers sometimes. You know, you got these people, they're like, you know, trying to formulate this group, get a group together, you know, to fight this other group. And they will, they're making things up. They're lying, trying to recruit preachers to get on board with this. And a lot of preachers, you know, they're, you know, they're like, you know, I don't, I don't know what to do. I'm just trying to mind my, my, my own business. I've heard a lot of them say, I'm just trying to mind my own business. I'm just trying to do my own thing. I'm trying to you know, stay in my church and just love my people. And they're inviting, you know, they, some of these guys, they've invited these bozos to come into their church. And they haven't got the guts to call him up now that he's been exposed and say, you know, I can't have you come. You're a liar. You're a heretic. You're a false accuser. I can't do that. Now, they haven't, they haven't got the guts to do that. You know why? Because the multitude is circling the wagons around guys like him. Because if he goes down, then they know they should go down too because they're telling the same lies. And you know what? I'm not going to follow a multitude to do evil. I'm not going to do it. I'll do whatever I can to get the truth out. I'll take advantage of things like the internet and stuff if I have to. And I'll get my voice out there. And when I know something is true, I'm going to say something about it. And I'm not, I'm not going to follow the multitude. I could care less what the establishment thinks. I could care less what everybody's doing. We do not follow a multitude to do evil. And we see that today, though. You know, even, as, you know, even if you know, in the internet world, okay, or when it comes to a politician... We might think, you know, our voice doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter what we say. You know, whether if it's something that's being spoken out against the president, you know, what does it matter? It, isn't it just a lot easier to just hop on the bandwagon and be against somebody? I mean, everybody's doing it. We've got the numbers on our side. You know, Fox News is behind us. The Baptist establishment's behind us. You know, let's go ahead and you know what? We can repeat the story too. No, you shouldn't do that. Listen, if you know that's not true, if you know it's being exaggerated, if you know it's being twisted, stand against it. Listen, we all have our circle of influence. And yours might be small, but you know what? Let your circle of influence see there's somebody that's not afraid to tell the truth. And you know what? Maybe those, there might be a couple more. Maybe you'll reach one or two people in your circle and they'll reach a couple more in their circle. And maybe we'll get to the point in this country where lying won't be so popular anymore. We're bearing false witness. We'll get a news anchor thrown out of their job where it'll get a preacher thrown out of his church. That's what needs to be going on in this country. And you say, oh, that's cruel. That's mean. We shouldn't want preachers to lose their job and news anchors thrown out of their job. Well, we're going to show you what the Bible said should be done with false witnesses here in a little bit. And you think I'm being mean. The Bible's a lot more mean than I am. But lies there, they're often acceptable just because of the amount of people saying them. Well, this person's saying it, so it must be true. Not necessarily. Not necessarily these guys, sometimes they just repeat things. Oh, I heard it from them. I trust that person. 
And I, I've seen this happen too. I've, I firsthand, I have watched information get passed from one source to the next source to the next source. And I've seen how the story has improved. And before you know it, what started out as a partial truth is now by another person, a total lie. And that person that's telling the total lie, they feel completely justified in what they're doing because they trust the person that told them the partial truth. And so they feel like they can get on board with that and they can just run with it. And you know what? That's not okay. They are accountable for that lie that they are telling. All by themselves, they are accountable for that lie. And you know, lies, they are, they're often acceptable in society because of who the lie is about. Listen, in a Baptist church, we can say whatever we want about Obama and nobody's going to have a problem with it. But you know what? If it's a lie, we should have a problem with it. We, all of us should have a huge problem with it. A Democrat should have a problem if somebody's lying about Donald Trump. And a, a Republican should be mad if someone's lying about a Democrat. All of us ought to hate it. All of us ought to have a problem with lying, but we do. We will accept it because it's what we want to hear. Well, good. That's what I want to hear. No, don't be, don't be okay with that. Don't, don't just accept that. Lies are often accepted because it's, you know, it, it's what we want to hear. The people are saying what we want. And the news media, they know. They know who's listening. They, they understand who their audience is. They know what they want to hear. And they will say whatever they got to say because they're looking for the ratings. And they have no problem with lying. And most people today, they, they don't have the guts to call someone out for lying. We've got to get back to doing that. We've got to get back to calling people out, confronting them with it, shaming them with it. If we have to, people ought to be ashamed of themselves for being liars and bearing false witness. They should be humiliated for that. They ought to be held accountable for that. And what does the Bible say should be done to those who bear false witness? Look what it says in Deuteronomy chapter 19 and verse 15. Deuteronomy 19. And verse 15. And listen, we don't follow these laws in our country. But that doesn't mean God doesn't expect us to live by these rules. Okay, Just because these things aren't being enforced, yes, in America, you can bear false witness and 99 times out of 100, you can completely get away with it. But God hasn't changed his mind on how he feels about bearing false witness. And God hasn't changed his mind on what should be done. This is America. We don't follow God's laws. But we should be following God's laws, all right? So you think about this. The next time you want to bear false witness about somebody, understand what God thinks man ought to do to you. And look what it says in uh, verse 15 of chapter 19. One witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin, in any sin that he sinneth. At the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall every matter be established. If a false witness rise up against any man to testify against him that which is wrong, then both the men between whom the controversy is shall stand before the Lord, before the priests and the judges, which shall be in those days. And the judges shall make diligent inquisition. And behold, if the witnesses be a false witness and hath testified falsely against his brother, then shall ye do unto him as he had thought to have done unto his brother so shalt thou put evil away from among you. And folks, let me help you all out with this. Listen, we live in America. Our, our laws are messed up. We're so heathen in this country and even in churches today. We're so stinking heathen. We're so against the laws of God that we have no idea the way things ought to be. And listen, nobody should get in trouble because of just one man's word. But you know, it happens all the time. If one person rises up and says, I saw this person do whatever, that person shouldn't get in trouble. You know why? Because that, they might just be lying about their enemy. What it was supposed to be, it was in our Constitution, and they, they act like we still do this, but they don't, that a person is innocent until proven guilty. It's supposed to be that you know a person who gets charged with a crime, the burden of proof, it's on the prosecution. Okay? And, but that's not the way it is in this country. People get accused of things all the time. As a pastor, if I were to get accused of something, if somebody was to come and say, hey, you know, I saw Pastor Tommy, you know, going into a bad place. You know what? 
This is America. I'd probably be done for. They would put an article about it in the newspaper. People would run around telling everybody about it. And even if it was a crime, something that was illegal, somebody says, hey, I saw Pastor Tommy, you know, rob a person. I saw him stealing. I shouldn't get in trouble for just one witness unless they find, now they can use that one witness, but now they need to find some other proof too. And if they're able to do that, then I should get in trouble at the mouth of two or three witnesses. Because it would. Then we can just start going around accusing things all the time. Oh, man, you know, I'm getting tired of Brother Mark. I've got a problem with him. I'm going to go, you know, they find some dead body somewhere. I saw Mark Harshman do it. I saw him do it. And now he's going to get locked up in jail. And they're going to have him in there for a year. Because we don't do a speedy trial by a jury of their peers. We'll let him sit in there for a year while he's got to figure out how to prove himself innocent. You know how wicked that is? And you know how wrong and sick and twisted that is that we will let somebody hang for what one person says. And that goes on in this country. And you know what else goes on? We will accept a story about somebody if one person tells it. One person comes along. A preacher. I saw this guy doing this. Okay. Well, get, don't feel bad when I don't. You know, when I don't let it change one thing that I do. Because you know what? I am not going to hold somebody accountable for one person's witness. That's what the Bible teaches at the mouth of two or three. Now, if I have two people come and say, or you know, if somebody comes to me and tattles on somebody in the church, hey, I saw so-and-so doing this. Okay. Thanks for letting me know. I'm not going to do anything unless I hear about it from someone else too. I might go ask that person. I might go confront that person. But if they tell me, no, that, that's not true. I didn't do that. Well, then you know who I'm going to listen to? I'm going to listen to the individual that got accused. And until we have the second witness, I, I, don't, I, I don't need to worry about it. I'm not, I'm not going to do anything about it. That's the way it's supposed to be done. And listen, we're so messed up in this country today. Preachers are so messed up today. One person can come along and say, you know what? I heard this about so-and-so. And then that preacher will take it and run with it. This is the fact. I know this about so-and-so. I've got information that can destroy him. Really? What'd you see him do? I'm not going to, I'm not going to say anything. You know, I, I don't, I don't want to destroy his family. Why not? Hey, if you saw somebody do something that was so bad, you know what? It's your duty to society to report it. Why won't you report it? You know why? Because people know they shouldn't just lie. But they feel like, you know, if, you know they feel like they can, you know, once again, get behind their pulpits and that's their safe space where you can say whatever you want. I would think this would be one space where a person would be terrified of lying. Most of us would be terrified of lying in a courtroom while we're up there on the bench and we should be terrified of that. But I would think we would be more terrified standing behind a pulpit lying. But people, they don't even care. Don't even care. That's how wicked we are. And we will. We'll take one person's witness. Sam Gipp says that Steven Anderson's got a porn addiction and he'll tweet about it and people will like it and run with it. So you are, you're going to accuse him of that because of, of one witness. And he didn't even say how he knows that. He didn't even say when he saw it. You know, where, where did he get this information from? Nobody even asked. Why aren't that? Why aren't his friends calling him out on there and saying, man, hey, you can't do that. You know why? Because we've created these structures of, and these hierarchies and he's towards the top because he's an evangelist and nobody dares say anything against that. Bunch of cowards. A bunch of wimps. I mean, a bunch of just sorry saps. I can't think of anything bad enough to call them. That people will do that. We don't, do, we don't rise up and we don't hang somebody for one person's witness. And listen, if a person, if, if somebody does witness against somebody, we see there in that passage in Deuteronomy, you know what's supposed to be done to that person? That whatever it is they thought would be done to them should be done to the person who gave the false witness. So if I accuse somebody of murder, okay, that person deserves to die. Or in our country, they would go to prison. And so, if I go and I make up a story and I say, hey, I saw Brother Mark, he, he's the one that killed that person because I hate him, because I don't like him and I lie about him. You know what should be done to me? I should be thrown into prison. 
If we were in the Bible days, I would have been put to death and rightfully so. Do you realize, I mean, the damage that we can do to somebody by lying about them like that? And you understand that's what people are trying to do. And when you're lying and you're saying somebody's got a porn addiction, when you're saying you know, that they fornicated, when you're saying all these things about their morality and stuff, you know what should happen to you if you're saying that about a preacher? You're basically saying he should get thrown out of his pulpit. Nobody should listen to him. You know what? Any preacher that says that ought to be run out of the ministry. No church should ever have them, ever have them preach in their church when they are, when you when you can prove that they are lying about somebody like that, whatever they thought should be done to them, it ought it ought to be done to them. Amen. That's that's the way we ought to do these things. And these guys that are out there, there's no way I'm having them come here and preach it behind my pulpit. I got enough respect for you. I'm not going to get a bona fide liar up here and just let him let him preach and pretend he's a man of God proclaiming the word of God. What is wrong with us? In our country, what is what has happened? Listen, in Proverbs nineteen verse five, it says, "A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall not escape." Many will entreat the favor of the prince, and every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. And then verse nine says, "A false witness shall not be unpunished, and he that speaketh lies shall perish." Many times, Pete, when it talks about you know, um, every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. Sometimes people would, you know, they would lie about somebody because maybe they get bribed. That's happened before where somebody has been bribed. Hey, when you go to court, you need to say this about that person and they will. They'll change their story because it's going to it'll help them out financially. They'll accept that gift. You know, these preachers go lie about this person. We'll promote you. We'll get you preaching at the next big meeting. I'll have you be a guest speaker for me. and We'll give you a big love offering. And what do they do, man? They, they fall in line just like nothing. I mean, once again, I, I, I'm embarrassed, folks. I, I'm, ab- I'm absolutely ashamed. Pro- Proverbs 21, verse 28. A false witness shall perish, but the man that heareth speaketh constantly. A false witness shall perish. Okay? There are some things that if, I mean, if you're going to lie about, you ought to be put to death. It, and what are those things? If you, are, if you tell a lie about somebody, That if they were to get the punishment that goes with that, it would be death in many cases. And if you do, if you lie about somebody like that, what was supposed to happen to them should happen to you. That's what the Bible teaches. People ought in this country, they should be horrified of telling lies. I mean, they ought to just be terrified. We should be so scared of bearing false witness that we just keep our mouth shut. You know, if we if you don't know, just keep your mouth shut. That's, that's not that hard. You know, if everybody's standing around talking, if the multitude's standing around and they're talking bad about somebody, and you know, we all like to be a part of the conversation. We all like to act like we know something. But if you don't know something, you know what? Just keep your mouth shut. Just don't say anything. Say, yeah, you know what? It's, it's pretty popular right now to attack this guy. It's pretty popular right now to be spreading these stories. But you know what? I don't know for sure if that's true. Yeah, you know, I sure would like to get more. I'd I'd like to get as many retweets as Sam Gipp does. Well, it's working for him saying bad things about Steven Anderson. So, you know, I'll do that too. But, you know, what? I don't I don't know that for sure. So, you know what? Just then don't do it. Oh, but I I think it's true. I think, you know, I, I, I know he's got some skeletons in his closet. Really? How do you know? What did you see? Well, I heard this person told me. Really? And, and you're going you're gonna to use that against them. You're not going to listen to somebody. You're not going to talk to somebody. You're not going to have anything to do with somebody because of what one person told you. I'm telling you, folks, this is, this is, it's out of control. You know, as a side note, you know, we should you know, never, ever should we accept just one person's witness as a reason to punish someone. We saw it in Deuteronomy 19, verse 15. One witness shall not rise up against any man. For any iniquity, it says in Mark chapter 14, verse 56. Turn over, turn over there. Mark 14 and verse 56. This is when Jesus was on trial. And look what it says. It says, For many bear false witness against Him. For their witness agree not together. They're trying to bust Jesus for something. And so they have, they're lining up false witnesses. But one of the things that they did back then 
Because he, as wicked as their government was back then, it was better than our governments now. As wicked as their government was back then, it's better than most of our churches are right now. And so they are. They're, here they come along. They're falsely accusing Jesus of things. And it says in, their, in verse 57, there arose certain and bare false witness against him, saying, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands. And within three days, I will build another made without hands. But neither so did their witness agree together. And the high priest stood up in the midst and asked Jesus, saying, Answerest thou nothing? What is it that, uh, which these witness against thee? But he held his peace and answered nothing. Again, the high priest asked him and said to him, Art thou the Christ, the Son of the blessed? These people, they're, 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 they want to crucify Jesus. But you know what? Unfortunately, they had laws that they had to follow. And they couldn't just put him to death for one witness. So they're bringing, just trying to, come on, any two people. There's got to be two people somewhere that have a witness that agree together. And you know what? They couldn't do it. Nobody's witness agreed. But they still rammed it through anyway. And they still crucified Jesus. Even, and that's an interesting thing too about the crucifixion of Jesus. They still went completely contrary to their law and what they did to kill him. So it, it was in their law. Yeah, if they'd had two witnesses against him, legally they could have put him to death. But let me tell you, his death on the cross was completely illegitimate. He was completely innocent. And they couldn't do it. They couldn't get two witnesses to uh, witness against him. And we should never just take one person's word for it. Next time, if somebody comes to you and they tell you something about somebody, you don't, worry, you don't have to hold... That other person comes. You don't have to quit being their friend because of one person. All right, you know, they might be lying. They might want to be your best friend instead of them. Say, so, you know, two witnesses, two or three. Three is a lot better. And we need to live by these things. And we 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 shouldn't treat people different just because of one story you heard from one person, even if you agree, or even if you trust that person. Okay, because that's happened to me before where somebody's come and they've told me things. And you know what? I, I'll, and, and it's hard sometimes. That's why it's so bad and you bear false witness. But listen, I try to make sure I never change my behavior towards somebody because of one person's story. Yeah, and, and, I, and I, I've had preachers tell me stories about other preachers before. And it's like, you know what, man? I hope that's not true. But you know what? I, I, I don't let it affect what I do. I, I will still fellowship with those people. I will still be friends. I'm not going to listen to one person's story. I don't care who it is. And I don't have to. And I shouldn't. And don't, don't you ever do it just because of one person's story. And, I'll, you know, and it, it blows my mind, all these people that are tell, trying to tell me who my friend should be. And yet, they, all, they just start throwing all these false accusations. And you know, you know, they'll tell me, you need to talk to this preacher. You need to talk, you need to, talk to that preacher. Well, no, I'm talking to you right now. What do you think the problem is? Well, this, this, this. How do you know that? Well, you need to talk to this preacher. I'm, yo, so you don't know firsthand. You've got one witness and you're throwing that guy under the bus for it. And now you expect me to throw somebody under the bus because you told me you have one witness. Even if they were the witness themselves, I shouldn't do that. And yet that's what people expect. And listen, just because they've just gone completely the way of Balaam, just because they've completely gotten away from the Bible, doesn't mean I should do it. And I'm not, and I'm not going to. But sometimes too, you see, sometimes we misunderstand situations. Sometimes we don't remember accurately. Sometimes we're just prejudiced. It's, it's true. Sometimes we do, we've seen things the wrong way before. We've taken things the wrong way. And we got to be careful. We can't always just trust our own eyes. How many? I mean, we've all been there. Well, we heard, we we misunderstood somebody. We heard them wrong. I, I think they said this. Well, if you're not sure, don't hold it against them. Don't don't do that. Make sure you're right. And listen, we we can bear false witness, even when we think we're telling the truth. And that happens many times when we are. We're repeating people we trust. So that's why you got to make sure your information is accurate. Before you go on social media and you're just typing away, just railing on somebody, well, you better make sure your source is real good. 
I mean real good because you're, you're on dangerous ground right there. You know, don't believe everything you hear. There are, there's a simple, the Bible says the simple believeth every word. But the prudent man looketh well to his going. You should have very, very high standards for what you consider a reliable source and what you consider facts. Fox News is not a reliable source. Infowars is not a reliable source. All right, your little blog that you go to on the internet, that's not a reliable source. Okay? And you need, you need, to, you need to be careful with that stuff. I mean, you ought to have the highest of standards. You know, listen, I like people. I like getting along with people. You know, I, I do. I, I like preachers. I want to be friends with as many preachers as I can. It's getting hard when I'm getting humiliated by these people because they're just getting caught in their webs of stinking lies and bearing false witness. But I do. I, I want to think the best of people. And I, I want to be, I, I do. I want to be friends. And you know what? I don't think it's wrong for me to have an extremely high standard of what I consider, you know, a fault, a, or a, a true witness against someone. Okay, you, you saw a 20 second clip on YouTube? Uh, sorry, I got higher standards than that. Oh, you heard this from another preacher? I'm sorry, I've got higher standards than that. Oh, you saw this with your own eyes? Okay, I'll keep that in mind. Were you with anybody else? If I see your stories agree together, then I might pay attention. If there's three of you, then I'll really pay attention. But if it's just you, that's not good enough for me either. No, there's, nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. We do not want to be falsely accusing. Because it's like, you know, we hear stuff from non-credible sources. And it's, oh, it's my response. I got to get the word out about this. I got to let people know. Why? Did you see it? Did you witness it? Did, you, you didn't, you're not the one that saw the murder. So you know what? Just mind your own business. Listen, everybody wants to get in front of a news camera. And everybody wants to say... That they've got information. And we've also, in a lot of the conspiracy theories that are out there, one of the sources that they use that a story didn't happen the way that they say it happened is they will show clips from, you know, live broadcasts where the news media is questioning people and they're all saying, yeah, I saw this. This is what happened. You know, it happened this way. And then the official account later shows it was something completely different. What are they, what are they trying to hide? You know, what are the higher-ups trying to hide? Nothing. Those people were lying. Those people wanted to get on the news. And they knew if I'm like, yeah, you know, I didn't, I, I didn't see it. Yeah, I, 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 was, I was watching TV when it happened. I didn't see nothing. Well, that, that's not going to make the news. These people want to get on the news. Yeah, 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 I saw it. Yeah, no, I saw the two guys running through the woods at Sandy Hook or whatever it was. You know, there's all these people that said they saw these things. No, they heard the rumors. It was just like what happened in Hurricane Katrina. Whenever it's like, oh, I'm seeing bodies just floating down the streets. There's bodies everywhere. They didn't see that, but they heard it. The rumors got spread. And listen, nobody's going to pay attention to my newscast. If I'm like, yeah, I, I, yeah, everybody else is reporting bodies floating down the streets. I haven't seen it yet. You know, apparently where I'm at, nothing's happening. Well, nobody's going to pay attention to them. Their ratings are going to stink. So what do they do? They lie about it. And then later on, people are, are, are using that. But listen, you can't, you just, you can't trust people. You can't trust just one. You especially can't trust people when you put a camera in front of their face. That's when they lie more than ever is when there's a camera in front of their face because they do. They want to get on the news. And so you do have high standards. And there are, there are things that can cloud our judgment. Exodus 23, 8. And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise and perverteth the words of the righteous. We don't want to get bought off. We don't want, we don't want people you know, clouding our judgment. We've got to get these things right. The things we say have a powerful, lasting effect on people. And uh, Matthew 12, 35, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Let me tell you, some of y'all are going to, we're going to have to spend a lot of time on judgment day just dealing with the stuff that you said on Facebook and Twitter and all that. You bet, you're going to be held accountable for those things. So you know what? Let your words be few. If you don't know something, 
Don't say anything. We do. We all want to look smart. We all want to be included in the conversation. But if you don't know anything, don't say anything. It's very clear that our witness matters. It's important. But sometimes without realizing it, we can be sending false information without saying or doing anything. Look at Ezekiel chapter 33, verse 1. Ezekiel chapter 33 and verse 1. You can bear false witness without even opening your mouth. It says in verse 1, Again, the word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, and say to them, When I bring the sword upon the land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast, and set him for their watchmen, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people. Then whosoever heareth the sound of the trumpet and taketh not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see the sword come and blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned, if the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. Y'all see that? See that watchman? People are trusting him. They're counting on him. They can't see what's out there. They're trusting that guy that's up on top of the wall. And when he's silent, that tells everybody, you know what, we're safe. We don't need to worry about anything. His silence is sending a message of safety. But if there's not safety, if somebody's coming, he's supposed to make some noise. And you know what? I'm afraid many times we bear false witness by keeping our mouth shut. You know, your friends, your family, your co-workers are talking. Yeah, you know, I, I, think, I think there's multiple ways to heaven. You know, I think we all basically serve the same God. As long as we just do our best, I think we're okay. And you just sit there silent. You know what everybody's going to think? You must not have a problem with that. I'm sorry. I think we ought to say something. Uh, actually, that's not true. You know, it's our job to be a witness. And sometimes our silence, it does, it sends a message that something's okay. It's kind of like with your kids. When your kids are doing something bad, we've all been there before, where one of the kids does something really bad, and then all the other kids, what do they do? They look at mom and dad. Now, why are they looking at mom and dad? They're waiting to see what happens. They're expecting something to happen. And if, you know, let's say, you know, to, you know Tommy punches Jason in the stomach. The other kids are all going to look at me to see what happens. Well, if I do nothing, the other kids are going to think, dad doesn't have a problem with punching our siblings in the stomach. And then the next thing you know, you got to have you punching Chloe in the stomach. You know? And, you know, and my silence is showing my approval or that I don't think it's a big deal. But maybe I'm sitting there stewing. Maybe I do have a problem with it. And I am, I'm sending this wrong, I'm sending a wrong message by doing nothing. And sometimes when things are going on that are bad, we need to say something about it. If I'm going to a meeting and preachers are stinking and lying through their teeth and I'm just sitting there, I'm not amening, but I'm just sitting there and I'm silent. Well, then what am I doing? I'm saying I'm okay with this. You know what? I'm not okay with that. I'm going to say something about it. I'm going to expose these things because that silence, it sends a wrong message. And silence, it often speaks of approval. And silence, too, it can also speak ignorance. You know, if we're all talking about something, if, I, if I'm like, yeah, when I leave here tonight, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run to Dixon, I'm going to take Interstate 88. And then, and this happened a while back, where you couldn't get off the Dixon exit, and I had to go all the way to Rochelle and go back to Dixon. It was, it was a nightmare. Okay, now, nobody knew I was going to do that, but at the same time, if I'd, have been, if I'd have been talking to Brother Mark who lives in Dixon, like, yeah, we're going to do it, and we're going to uh, go on 88 to go to Dixon, and he doesn't say anything, and then that happens later. I'm like, hey, man, I did that. He's like, yeah, I knew it was like that. Well, then why did you tell me? I wasted an hour going that way. And, you know, that, that you know, silence, it says that you know, we don't know something. And if we don't know something, yeah, keep your mouth shut. But if you know something, say something. You know, then, yeah, you can say something if you actually know something. But silence does. Silence, it speaks things. Silence, many times it says everything's okay. But also another thing that bears false witness real quickly is our participation. You know, participating in things. First Thessalonians 5.22 says, abstain from all appearance 
of evil. If we are participating in something that we believe is wicked, then aren't we communicating to other people that it's okay? I say it all the time. Everywhere you go, you're endorsing that place. When you come visit a church, you're saying, you know what, I endorse this church. When your friends or your neighbors, they see you going to church, you're saying, I'm, I'm for that church. When you walk into a restaurant, you're proclaiming to everybody, hey, I am for this restaurant. I think this place has good food. When you walk into a store, hey, I think this store is not going to rip me off. When you come walking out with a cart full of merchandise from Walmart, you're saying, I think Walmart is a safe place to shop by participating. And sometimes we participate in things that we shouldn't be participating in. And we do, we'll even make up excuses for it. You know, yeah, I, I know I ought to be doing this. I know I shouldn't be doing that. You know, we'll do that with our kids. You know, yeah, I know you shouldn't, I shouldn't be drinking while we're, we got a can of beer in our hands. Well, that's going to send a mixed message to those kids. They're not going to completely get that. They're not going to understand. They're not, you know, they might follow the wrong witness in that. Yeah, you're saying one thing, but you're doing something else. And our participation in things sometimes sends, it sends a message of approval. You know, if I'm hanging out at a bar and I'm drinking at a bar, right after I preached a message against alcohol, okay? Now, if I get up, if I get up tonight and I preach, if I, pre, if I would have preached a message against alcohol and I'm using the Bible, okay, was my message I preached truth? Okay. But then if I leave here and I go to the bar and I get drunk, you know, people are going to get confused all of a sudden. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute. You know, we heard one thing tonight, but now we're seeing something completely different. I'm sending a mixed message by what I'm doing. I'm bearing false witness. Not only am I telling you it's okay to do that, I'm telling you it's okay to be a hypocrite and two-faced. And I shouldn't, shouldn't do that. I'm bearing false witness. You can, come, you can come confront me at the bar. Hey, Brother Tommy, this, this isn't okay. Yeah, I know. This is, this is wicked. It's a sin. I'm telling the truth. But you're watching me participate. And it is. It, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get real confusing. And I am literally, with my actions, I am bearing false witness. And so we, whether we realize it or not, people are often following our lead. And many times, you know, parents are. They're involved in things they wouldn't want their children involved in. We've got to watch that stuff. We need to understand we've been called to be a light to this world. We are God's witnesses here on earth. And in a, in a world that's already filled with false witnesses, we need to be careful to make sure we only speak the truth. Only things that are true. It is human nature to just want to weigh in on every subject. We want to show we know something about everything. Sometimes we just like to hear ourselves speak but if we don't know what we're talking about, just be quiet. I'd tell you to shut up, but that's not very nice. I'll say be quiet. Just be quiet. Proverbs 17, verse 27. He that hath knowledge spareth his words. And a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Even a fool, when he holdeth his peace, is counted wise. And he that shutteth his lips is esteemed a man of understanding. We ought to underline that verse. Man, even a fool when he holdeth his peace is counted wise. We should, we should be so scared of bearing false witness that we're afraid to open our mouth. You know, we need, we need to check. We need to double check. Before we ever say anything against anyone, we better be real sure. I mean, I mean really sure. Because that is, that is a dangerous, that is a serious thing. And I am afraid we have let the American culture rub off on us too much. We've watched way too much news. We've been on social media way too much. We've been listening to too many preachers. And we do. We feel safe in bearing false witness. And that is a serious, serious sin. Number nine of the Ten Commandments, Thou shalt not bear false witness. One of the things that God hates is a false witness that speaketh lies. And we ought to hate it too. And ought to have, well, not want to have anything to do with it. And we need to just learn, you know what? If I don't know, I'm going to zip the lip. And we need to watch who we listen to. Let's not encourage these people. Let's discourage them. If they do, and, if you, and when you know somebody's lying, rebuke them. 
Rebuke them sharply. I mean, they ought to be, people ought to be terrified of telling lies and getting caught telling a lie. We have no fear of it in this country, but we're Christians today. While we might not have to fear our government when it comes to that, we might not have to fear the world because they could care less, we ought to fear God. And say, not going to happen. I'm going to fear God and I'm going to keep His commandments. So, let's all stand together.